Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is going to be a well, welcome to relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety, panic attacks. This is going to be something. I'm not sure what, but it's going to be something. So please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And just to let you know right from the start that I'm recording this during the day. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. There will be background sounds. Um, At the moment there's not a lot, but there's a pigeon in the garden, in the tree. And that pigeon's been following me around for about 12 years. Wherever I move to, it just seems to follow me. So, that's not a lot I can do about that. But instead of sitting watching television or doing something else, I decided to make a recording. So, if you need it to be completely silent, then I can't offer that, necessarily. Um, Any minute someone could go into the garden and start singing or someone could start playing music in the background so you know if it's anything too much like a helicopter landing on the roof I probably will you know press the pause button but just to let you know that uh, there will possibly it's not going to be silent but it doesn't have to be silent for this recording and the reason I say that is because I've done recordings for people, or not recordings, I've actually done sessions with people face to face in the same room when there's been a lot of activity going on. I've done hypnosis with two people in actual hospitals. One was in a cancer ward and it was proper noisy. Beep, beep, beep all the time, people all kinds of sounds and noises and the nurse is interrupting us continuously not realising what we were doing because the curtains were drawn and this was a a patient that had had to have a, a physical procedure done and he wanted me to help him to reduce his anxiety so that he could have the procedure done and he wouldn't have it done until I turned up to see him and do hypnosis with him. So I know it can be done with background sound. Uh, Also did one at Papworth Hospital uh, for a lady that just had a double lung transplant and I was doing hypnosis with her just to help her to relax, you know, after the operation. And the constantly every five minutes and someone would come into the room and very loud very loud they they, definitely some of the people didn't have volumes volume controls on their voice boxes and did another hypnosis session with someone it was a pain relief session but it was relaxation for pain relief (laughs) i didn't realize it was a saturday morning did not realise there was an air display going on above us. I did there was going to be. So basically it was an air show in Marsham Heath and this was in Ipswich. So it was an air show going over Ipswich, like hundreds of planes or whatever. Um, the lady that I was with, or the man, I forget, didn't even notice it. Was not interested because she was listening to me. So I think uh, the reason I'm perhaps making uh, a point of this is it doesn't have to be silent. It doesn't have to be um, complete silence the whole time. It's about my voice, me talking and you listening. If you choose to listen, of course, I can't make you listen, but that's all it is other things are there and you know what and I've I've noticed in the past 
a uh, couple of things I've noticed is the sometimes a sound if you've got a favorite recording of mine or of anyone's if you've got a favorite thing you like to listen to sometimes a background sound can feel really nice because you listen to it maybe 10 15 times and then you hear that you hear that um the owl in the background or in this case a pigeon and it just feels feels familiar feels relaxing uh, and also another thing I noticed is some of the professional recordings of the past have background sounds on albums actual you know multi-million selling albums have background sounds so you know I think I'm okay they're not you know some sometimes with sort of singing you can hear something in the background maybe that's just my hears hears my ears they should be called hears shouldn't they really not ears hears because they hear so that's it so I'm going to focus on changing a changing the way you feel by focusing on it so there's lots of different ways that we could feel but I'm not going to try and change you know feeling good I'm not going to try and change feeling hungry or anything like that this is going to be focusing on anxiety and I suppose really the doom and gloom that's being uh, handed out to everyone at the moment and even those people listening to this in years and years time I, I very much doubt that the TV or the newspapers the news are going to be any different to the way they are now they're still going to be peddling negativity so this is something to can't stop that stuff happening can't stop what stop what happens in the world we can't stop what the newspapers print unless you actually own a newspaper so if you do own a newspaper I command you to start putting positive stories <laughs> I command you um, but yeah generally most of us don't own newspapers or uh, news stations on television most of us some of us do though there might be someone listening that does and which is good you know everyone's welcome but have a good long talk <laughs> have a talk to yourself have a word with yourself <laughs> if you do and uh Maybe focus on some positive stuff because there's lots of positivity out there, lots of wonderful stories, lots of people helping each other, um, just generally, not even connected to what's going on uh, worldwide. So, this is going to be kind of focused on combating or facing that anxiety connected with overload of negativity yeah that's what that's going to be combating o uh, negative overload or negativity overload loads of different ways to do this loads of different ways to approach it and also before I consider continuing consider continuing uh, to let you know that on the website you can listen to this podcast continuously you can uh, go to there's a in the menu you can listen to it continuously without adverts as you can with the four main podcasts that I have uh, which means you know it's just there for people that 
don't want to hear the adverts and for those that want to listen continuously you can also download each every recording that I make for free you can stream them all for free you can also a new thing I've got bulk downloads that you can get uh, where you can download this podcast for example 50 recordings in each download 1 to 50 51 to 100 is the, the the two bulk downloads you can get so far for this podcast plus other ones the other podcasts as well and that's free also so it's just all on my website so I'm going to ask you to focus but I'm not going to ask you I don't expect you to go to sleep this isn't a sleep session. You might fall asleep. So in that event, I have to say, only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Make sure that if you're sitting in a chair, that you've got chair armrests or something so you don't fall out of your chair if you do fall asleep. Of course, don't listen if you're operating a crane or, you know, this obviously is <laughs> basic stuff really. The idea is it's not about sleep, it's not even necessarily about relaxation, although everything I do is about relaxation. So that's just, it's almost like uh, an after effect, it's a side effect, it's just something that happens naturally anyway when you listen to me. Um, Most people would find that they feel more relaxed it might not even really be to do with me rather than to do with you because you're taking some time off from thinking about other stuff so when you're listening to me you're not thinking about that you're thinking about what I'm saying you're not thinking about the past or the future you're not worrying about stuff you're just focusing on this so I could just be reading out of the telephone directory if such a thing still exists and it would be a distraction and it could be relaxing incredibly boring probably more boring even than this but a distraction nevertheless but that's not what I'm doing here this is not the the aim of distracting you to reduce the anxiety levels although it will have that effect anyway, just naturally. So, I think a good thing to do would be to, I mean, if you have a piece of paper or something, you could write down what scale you are, what level of anxiety you are right now, or when you think about, yeah, we're gonna say the word, coronavirus. You know, I don't mention the word very often in my recordings because it's sort of a, trying to sort of move away from that stuff. But this is focusing on how you feel about the coronavirus. How do you feel? So I don't want you to answer. I just want you to notice the anxiety levels. And they will probably be a little bit lower than they would normally be because you're with me and there's even if you've never listened to me before there'll be a degree of support there and if you have listened to me many times you'll know that there's a support there you'll know that there's there's something almost kind of healing something relaxing already it softens so when you listen to me those those thoughts and feelings maybe some of those spiky emotions start to just be shaved down a bit so that they're no longer affecting you in the way they used to it's, it's a little bit like you know I don't know about you but I can't reach my toenails to 
bite them. I used to when I was a kid, but I can't, so I have to cut them. Because I've got a big, massive, fat belly, I it's a little bit of a struggle to get to the toenails, so I don't cut them as often as perhaps I could. And I don't mean I've got big, gangly toenails like, you know, trees. I don't, not nothing like that, but they sometimes get a little bit longer, just tiny, a little bit longer than I would do if it was my fingers. And occasionally they'll dig out to the sides. I'll go to the shops or something and I'll end up with a very uncomfortable foot because the nail's digging into my the toe next to it. And the amount of discomfort is really unpleasant. It's just all. Oh, and the, the toes are sensitive anyway, aren't they? But it's just like, oh, really? But I don't have to cut all the toenails. I don't have to do hardly anything other than just cut that one bit, trim that little bit of toenail that's digging into my into the other toe. And then I can walk absolutely fine without any discomfort whatsoever. It's like a tiny little change. Now, of course, you know, ideally you need to keep the toenails fairly short, but not short, short, just short enough so it doesn't dig into me or ruin my socks. But just a small change can make a difference. And I know it seems, it can seem a bit weird, like how, how can such a small little thing change how, how how can just listening to some strange English man on a recording on a podcast how can a how can that change the way that you feel about something that's become almost um, a little bit overpowering you know with the ongoing coronavirus constantness of it I mean there are a few things you can do practically like stop watching the news as often I watch the news once a day now and that's it I watch it once a day I've stopped listening to the um, talk radio because they've only got one subject at the moment so I'm limiting myself to what, listen to that unless, unless there's a particular person I like to listen to um, it's Nick Abbott I like to listen to at the weekends and maybe Steve Allen in the morning but that's it I don't listen to any of the other radio shows because all they're talking about is the same thing so there's, there's those things some practical things but you know that's it might be useful to you that's what I've found useful to me and I don't know if you can hear there's a bit of background people in the garden people who don't actually live here funny enough <laughs> um, so I listening to somebody on a recording might sound weird that that would change how you feel but it does and I think it's quite fascinating and you know, hypnosis isn't just about saying, now you'll feel this, or when this happens, you'll feel this way, and then that will be this way, and go down the escalator, and it's, it's, doesn't, it can be, of course it can be, but it doesn't have to be. It can just be conversational, it can just be me talking to you as a human being, not telling you what to do not telling you what to think or what to feel, not trying to manipulate you in a like forthright way, like you will feel this when I say this. and You might not, you might, you might not. My guess is the worst case scenario when you listen to me is you feel more relaxed at the end than you did before you started listening. That's my worst case scenario in my mind. 
and it's not a bad outcome really in a sense so and I hope uh, the lovely background sounds of the neighbours that don't actually live here visiting other neighbours is uh, when they're not supposed to yay is see I could be in I, a couple of weeks ago or even a week ago I was getting angry at this I'll be honest with you people coming onto the estate visiting other people when they were all supposed to be keeping separate but now I don't care anymore nothing to do with me I can't, we can't control other people can't control another person and trust me if I could I'd have Andre pooing exactly where I want him to poo so what level of anxiety is there when you think about the coronavirus what level of anxiety what number if it was like one zero to ten zero being nothing ten being the worst maybe it's higher than that maybe it's a plus plus three plus nine you know it might be higher than a ten it might be a level that is just ridiculously high and I felt that in the past so what you could do is you know you could keep a track of it in your head or you could write it down on a piece of paper and we can we're going to just look at it look at this feeling look at this where do you feel it where do you feel it in your body where do you feel it in your mind And I actually want you to focus on the background sounds as well. The very loud female voice and the child uh, crying as well in the background. I want you to focus on that as well as me. Because it's good to be in touch with those sounds around you. And also focus on what other sounds you've got on your side. So if you've got passing traffic but it's not taking up your awareness. It's just taking up a part. It's just there. So maybe, you know, you're giving 90% of your attention to me, 10% of your attention to other sounds that might be happening, either your side or my side. And that's okay because that's the part, it's part of this recording, it's part of this moment that we're sharing. This will never happen again, ever, in the entire history of the world. This moment, me talking, the very loud voice in the garden, um, the sound of the pigeon, now the loud voices at the front of the house going past. You hear that? Loudest voice in Essex. So this will never happen again in this way. So it's be it's saved for prosperity, posterity, posterior. So as you notice the level of you know what what number is it on that scale of zero to ten? just notice it what is it and all we're going to do is just keep going back to it and there's something about and it might sound weird because you kind of you may think well we should be doing some technique um, what about turning it into ice and allowing it to melt yeah we can do that what about imagining it's a volcano and pouring lots of hot, lots of cold water into it? 
so the, vol the volcano cools down and then that changes the feeling and you sort of imagine that that volcano which is the uh, feeling of the you know the emotions behind all this crap about the coronavirus and having to hear about it and there's our self isolation and all that stuff but then you pour cold water with lots of ice cubes into the volcano I mean talking like loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and you can hear it going as it's cooling down it's just a bit frothy looks like lemonade but you better not drink it because it might not taste very nice and he just like sizzle it down it's just and it just goes sizzle 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 because I can't even bother to I don't know what the sound of a volcano with water being poured into it would sound like I imagine it would probably be a bit more a bit more than just it's a bit of a half hearted but you see it's cooled down and you know by connecting something like that yeah it could that could work I mean you can imagine you know that thing being a hot air balloon and it's floating up and it's got all that that energy you know and it's floating in the sky and you think well it's just always there I don't want to see it in the sky anymore and it's just constantly reminding me of this stupid thing and so well actually if you made a little hole in it it would just start to float back to the ground and it will never be able to float back up again because it will be damaged and it won't be won't be able to won't be able to float into the sky anymore that hot air balloon no matter how much hot air it won't make any difference and hot air is a very good uh, analogy isn't it it's for or metaphor for the news uh, newspapers and continuous hot air that's coming out of there hot air out of there There's ways of you know, changing things. You could think, oh, we could do that. Yeah, true, we could do that. Uh, what other things could we do? We're not going to do it, but what other things could we do if we were to do it? Um, I suppose you could imagine the the scale, you know, this, the scale of 0 to 10. You can imagine it, like, I suppose, almost like a thermometer and you could see where it is now and you could so let's say it's heat and it's gone up to a level that you know that's not very nice that's uncomfortable so the higher it is the hotter it is the lower it is the colder it is so what you could do is you could get an ice cube and place it on the the bit that I don't know which actually uh, collects the data I don't know whatever it is you know is it the mercury or whatever so you place an ice cube on it the detector of the heat of the temperature and just notice how it goes down like maybe slowly at first and then just going down and how you feel different as you watch it going down continuously going down even when I'm talking I mean that's something you could do there's lots of different things you could you can imagine that for example let's think let's say if you're looking at a computer screen and you can see the volume of this thing and uh you can see it. So if you ever listen to music, sometimes you hear it, you perhaps look at the computer or phone, and you can see the the movement of the music. You know, I, I forget what they call it, the beats or whatever, and it's quite high. You can just turn down the volume on that to reduce that level so that it's much, much, much smoother. Well, you can imagine, I suppose, I mean, all that stuff can continue to happen in your mind as I, as I talk, but you can imagine, possibly, I mean, if you wanted, uh, 
the beach. Let's say this, um, you've got the sea, choppy sea, but not really cut, really, really, really like a windy day or I suppose it doesn't have to be a windy day but I guess that would have had a big effect on the the uh, the waves but a very wavy day very wavy I don't mean like you know like a royal occasion a royal wedding when everyone's waving at each other but wavy as in, in on the in the sea and you can just see the waves really high it's like oh you know but then actually if you watch it you can watch the waves start to calm down and you can notice every time the pigeon makes a sound you feel calmer for some reason and it's really weird because there's no reason why the sound of a pigeon or birds even though it's really in the distance I actually thought that there was two pigeons one in the, f the back garden and one in the front and they were talking to each other and then I looked and I watched and I realised it wasn't it was just one pigeon just jumping flying over the house from the front to the back and just literally talking to itself I so said it, it jumped it did actually jump it didn't it, it kind of jump flew sort of mixture sort of jumped it looked like it jumped onto the top of the house and then jumped back to the tree at the front but it moves and all the time it's saying relax relax everything's going to be okay everything's going to be fine just chill out man relax this is temporary it's only temporary everything's going to be okay relax that's what the pigeon's saying. I'm not saying it. You can listen to the pigeon if you want. I mean, I don't really want the pigeon stealing my thunder, if I'm honest. It's just, it could be the, we should call this the pigeon session. So, for those that, I'm not going to call it the pigeon session, but this can, we can know it as the pigeon session. Da, da, da. So imagining, I don't know, other things, ways of changing. So, you know, I talk about ice melting. You imagine you've got this sculpture. You can imagine what does this anxiety, the remainder, what does it look like? Whatever's left, what, what does it look like if you was to actually sculpt it? so you can imagine it moves out of your body and your mind in front of you and maybe uh, you could it doesn't matter if it's in your living room or your bedroom because it's you know doesn't matter because what you're going to do here is in your mind anyway just like all emotions and you move it out in front of you what does this sculpture look like because we're all artists you know we all have the ability to produce stuff even if it is just in our mind and let's face it it's a lot easier if you just do it in your mind so you've got this sculpture in front of you what does it look like it's the, the thing that represents the anxiety that you had about uh, coronavirus before you started listening to this what, what does it look like now as you move it out of your body and mind in front of you kind of seeing it in your mind's eye you know is it spiky is it I mean you know maybe you can remember what it looked like before and see them both together and realise that this one's different 
from the one before, maybe smaller, maybe a bit more softer. So as it is now, just notice how it is. So it could be in ice, let's say it's a sculpture in ice. And what do you need to do to it, to change it, to make it more softer, more gentle, more easily manageable, more palatable, more other words that kind of mean the same thing. What, what, what can you do? Can you maybe shave a little bit of the ice off the left, shave a little bit from the top, you know? Maybe add an ice cream with a cone on top of its head to give it a little funny hat. I mean, what can you do? Maybe you could best put it into a little canoe, a canoe made of ice. I don't know what the point of that would be, but you could if, if, it, if it was useful. Maybe you could make it dance. Do a little, do a little dance for you. Because remember, this, this is yours. This is, this is your bit of ice. This is your sculpture. You can make it do whatever you want. You are the puppet master of this particular puppet. Wait a minute. So you're the you're the pup you're the master of this puppet, which means it can't be the master of you. Oh wow! So you're not the puppet. That's the puppet. You're the master. That's not the master. Oh, I never thought about that. So it's in front of you. What can you do to change it? What can you do to change how you feel? What can make it more, more acceptable? I'm very pleased with the amount of words I'm coming up with. Palatable, acceptable, pretty much just the same word, isn't it? But I've come up with quite a few words. I do, I'm patting myself on the back. Luckily I've got 10 foot long arms, so it's good. So imagine, what else can you do with that piece of ice, that sculpture? Or is it sculptor? Sculpture? Who cares? What can you do with that ice image? I mean, something that I'd quite like to do, I think, is get a... What, what are those things that you can get? You know, with um, welders, like those welder uh, things, which shoot out flames. Do they call them welder's irons? I don't know what they call them. Uh, but I'd quite like to have one of them and to start sort of playing with it, with the ice, you know, making... Uh, I suppose it would be a similar thing to what you can use in the kitchen to burn the top of a souffle or something like that. You know, torch, some kind of torch. And of course, you know, safety comes first at all times. So maybe wear goggles or whatever. Uh, a rain mac, I don't know. Um, but it's in your mind, so it don't matter. And just, what can you do? I like the idea of being able to, cause you can make holes, you can move around and sculpt that thing to make it look silly. I mean, you know, there's other things you could do. I mean, maybe for some reason, whenever you see the, when you think of the coronavirus, you have that music, the Benny Hill music. So that's that's a very poor poor impression of the Benny Hill music, but or it could just you know be something really really random. So whenever you see the prime minister on the news, maybe you hear the sound of. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world made of plastic 
it's fantastic. I'm not focusing on his hair, but you know, Boris Johnson's Barbie girl hair, Barbie doll. But I don't know, maybe. I mean, he is like a Barbie Ken, isn't he? I mean, he's very, very handsome young man. He could be a Barbie Ken. Ken's Barbie or Barbie's Ken. So maybe, I don't know. But that might happen. And that'd be weird because to be fair, why would we start taking him seriously now? No one took him seriously before all this stuff happened. Why would we start taking him seriously now? He was a figure of fun and he seemed to be joining in and he was funny he came out with funny stuff so maybe we should uh, keep him as the comedian of the country <laughs> oh was that political actually not really it's just about things that you can do to change in fact, this could happen whenever you see any politician from any party. You could just hear a song come into your eye. And it could be anything. It could be literally any song you want. I'm trying to think of some up-to-date songs because I, I'm so old I can't think of any. But uh, it could be ABBA, Dancing Queen. So if you might, uh, for example, I know people listening in other countries, so I'm talking about British prime ministers and British people. So if, let's say if you've got, um, yeah, there's lots of different ones. Lots of different politicians, and you can have your own tune. A tune that you find funny, Gangnam style, or it could be... Um, I don't know. It could just be anything. But as you look at that sculpture, I know you might have noticed it's starting to melt. I don't know if it's all the hot air of me just talking nonsense, but it might also be the heat of like, you know, the, the torch making stuff. But it's starting to melt. How does it feel as you look at that ice sculpture? How does it feel? considering that's sort of supposed to be representing a feeling that we used to think had control over us, but now know that it doesn't. We're the ones, we're the masters. That's the puppet. The emotions are not our masters. So, oh, wait a minute. That's a bit of a weird concept. But I want to be, I want to be, in case you want to be a slave, obviously, if you, if you want to be a puppet, then you are allowed to be. Of course you are. The only problem is now you're never going to forget that you're being a puppet. <laughs> so if you, it's a puppet. So if you, if you enjoy that idea of an emotion um controlling how you feel and getting in the way of your happiness then you know grab onto it hold onto it and for all you can and enjoy it and I know some people love feeling sorry for themselves I know I do at times uh, we also like to blame other people of course that's uh, a wonderful human uh, quality that uh, I think most of us probably have at times as well some more than others but you've got this image, you've got this ice catastrophe in front of you. And just notice how it's changing. Notice how it's changing. And see, more background sounds, which can really help, because the more you hear that, that sound starts to melt the ice because what else could that sound do but to melt ice? Ra 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 ra. The ice is melting. <laughs> melting away. 
because even even the even the ice doesn't want to sit listening to it. Yeah, it's melting. So you feel different. You feel different, and you may not know why. You may maybe you don't care. Um, it might have something to do with listening to me, you know. Um, but I wonder what is your level now of anxiety when you think about the coronavirus where's it at now 0 to 10 I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world sorry I'm just amusing myself while you get that figure up What what number is it what number is it? Go on, tell me. So, um, there's lots of different things you can do. And there's lots of different ways that things can change. And things are always changing anyway, don't forget. No feeling stays the same. And I, I don't know, I kind of think that sometimes the anxiety that we experience, the stress that perhaps we experience is caused by trying to hold on to a feeling. And every time you hear that background sound, you become more relaxed and calm and thankful that I'm the one making the recordings. It's the only person I've ever met that actually doesn't need a telephone. It's the, it's the old joke. Were you taught to whisper in a helicopter? It's an old joke, that. I think... Uh... <laughs> so. There's lots of different ways you can get to the same place. And the only problem, I suppose, of listening to me, apart from obviously wasting an hour of your time, (laughs) is things change and it can be annoying because I know that the way I present myself sometimes and the way I talk, it doesn't sound professional. It doesn't sound like something that you'd, you know, you're like, wait a minute. How can uh, how can changes occur just by listening to this person just rambling on? There's there's no where's the focus? Where's the where's the instructions? Where's the therapy? Where's the um, the routine? Where's the structure? Where's the script? Where's the hypnotic script? I'll break it here. You you might be surprised, but I don't actually have a script that I'm reading off might you know come as a little bit of a surprise but you know what changes happen nevertheless and the changes happen much bigger than you realise because when it's done in real with real chat with real uh, feelings with a real person, not pretending to be something else, not pretending to put on uh, a persona, then I can actually contact you on a real human level. And that changes, those changes become stronger because it's almost like listening to a friend or someone that you care about. Um, someone that you trust and you make yourself I suppose more vulnerable to change because vulnerability isn't necessarily a bad thing it's actually quite a wonderful thing in some ways it, the only problem is some people take advantage of vulnerable people um, and I'm quite a vulnerable person at times and uh, I've had people take advantage of me I try to stop it now but you know it's not always easy but for this um, the vulnerability means that the 
positive suggestions, the, the positive ideas that your mind wraps around can take effect and they're allowed in more easily to actually make changes that last, uh, changes that actually improve your life. So that's what this is about. That's what everything I do is about when I make recordings. So some of it might seem like nonsense, and some of it really really is just nonsense. But there's a method to what I do. There's a reason for what I do. And ultimately, the result is how you feel. Not just now, not just during the recording, but tomorrow, the day after, the day after that. It's how you feel differently. How you realise that actually that part of your brain that just says to you, oh, I'm not going to be bothered about this now. This is just ridiculous. There's, There's no point worrying about this then you know that it affects you in a positive way and to actually get in touch with your own sense of humor we've all got different senses of humor and things that we find funny and we do we connect human beings connect with humor and sometimes we connect you know in a big way like something's really funny something's humorous But ultimately, the funniest things are things that we think to ourselves, isn't it, really? If people could actually know what we were thinking, um, luckily they don't. And it's funny. Everybody is a comedian in their own mind, as far as everybody thinks of funny stuff. And because you know what you like, what makes you laugh, you think of that stuff. You don't have to share it with anybody, but it's yours. And it might be grim humour, it might be quite dark, but if it's funny, it changes how you feel and it alleviates suffering and reduces anxiety, increases relaxation and gives you a feeling of well-being. And that's it, I think. I think I'm going to end the recording there. So thank you for listening. This was a a little bit different from what I've done before. Not not I mean in these podcasts. Uh in a sense of I don't know, just it's a little bit different. So I wish you all well. I'm not sure what the title of this is going to be now because I don't always know till the end of the recording what I'm going to call it. But I'll think of something in the next hour while I edit it and upload it and share it. So thank you very much for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.